Salut, Pascal Moscato here. Welcome back into another video tutorial in Motion Builder. And today we are looking at how to create a ragdoll and how to put uh, influence poses inside the ragdoll to control it uh, a little bit more. Let's jump into it. First, you'll need a character in your scene that is characterized and that has a control rig. Then we are going into the asset browser under the physical properties and we want to drag this ragdoll here into uh, the character. So in the navigator character, I'm gonna click and drag here. So now my character has a, a ragdoll component. Under the setup tab in approximation, I'm gonna click on create and you see the, the ragdoll capsule has appeared on my character. Now is the time to edit those capsules to make them fit better the visual of the character. So I'm going to do that. And there you have it, your first ragdoll. Uh, now to make it work, we will need to add uh, a solver to the scene. So in solvers, click on physics solver, drag and drop into the scene. To make it work, you have to make this online and then click on live. And now the ragdoll has fallen to the ground. You can notice a little shaking here. We're going to fix that. But first, let's stop this. So click on live to make it stop. Click on reset to start to make the character get into his um, default stance and then click on online to disable, to, to put it offline. To fix the little problem of shaking uh, we've just seen, I'm gonna increase the simple per frame and in properties, I'm gonna also increase the iteration per step to 128 and start again. It's a little bit less shaky. Uh, you can play with numbers to make it work better. But also you can see that the pose of the character is different. So be aware of that. When your character is on the ground, you can start to play around with it, with uh, the gizmo like this. Like a Muppet. And when you deselect the object, it's gonna fall. If you want to test your ragdoll, test uh, the configuration, the setup you've just made, you can also create, uh, for example, a, um, a cube. Scale it up a little bit. Go in physical properties. Take the rigid body, drag and drop on the cube. And start again the solver. So now you have a physical cube that you can interact with your ragdoll. Now let's go see the properties of that ragdoll. In ragdoll, in the setup um, tab, the important thing to, um, to keep your eyes on is activation. Uh, so for example, you might want to start your animation passive and until let's say frame 30 and key that and on frame 31, make the ragdoll active. So it's going to be playing the animation of your, the original animation. And then at frame 31, the ragdoll is going to be activated and it's going to collapse on the ground. This is for the whole ragdoll itself. And you can go deeper into body part activation and say, I don't want the legs or the, the lower part of the character to be activated. And to do that, you will need to uncheck the use global activation and manually set the ips to passive. And again, you can key that 
uh, during your animation. And one other important setup uh, is limit setup. This is the limit of the capsule rotation. So an example, if you want the elbow uh, to go uh, below this limit right here, that normally we wouldn't, but if your elbow is broken, for example, you need to come here and change uh, the rotation and maybe put minus 50 like this. So now the elbow can go uh, this way. And the last thing I want to show you is how to inject the pose into your ragdoll. Um, so what's going to happen is the ragdoll is going to try to reach that pose depending on on the weight you put into the pose. It's going to it's going to affect more or less the ragdoll. So to do that, I'm going to start by creating a, a pose. I'm going to go into my run animation pose control and create a pose from from this and go back into my stance take and into ragdoll and animation there's a little box here i want to drag and drop my newly created pose in here click on match and i'm also going to click on show so i can see the pose right here it just appeared when I click on the character pose in the, the pose system, I got a few options. Um, right now it's set to linear and it goes from zero to 150. So as the animation moves on, uh, the ragdoll is gonna try to reach that pose more and more. Um, let's make that to active. Physic online live and it play. Another cool thing now is um, to change linear to custom. You see this little tab custom weight tab here. And here you got the control over the, um, the influence uh, starting from zero to one. So this is the same result as the linear progression uh, going from zero frame zero to one at frame 150. Um, but you can use that and say, for example, I want 0.5 of influence for the whole the whole thing so now when you activate all of this and press play um, it's a weird pose but it tries at 50% to reach that pose and let's change that just a little bit and let's go with uh, 0.8 at one it's like a spring now let's say that at frame 75 I'm going to 0.5 and now all of this at the end is to generate animation. Right now it's only um, live. So let's go ahead and record this. So the, the, the way to do that is to first make sure that in the physics solver um, object, you got the recording checkbox on. And then you go here and click on record. It's gonna prompt you with a message. Do you want to overwrite this take or do you want to create a new one? I wanna create a new one. And do you want to copy the data uh, to the new take? And I'll say no, it's a fresh take. And now I need to go back into my custom weight and create a new one. I'm going to go from one to point eight and zero. Let's reset this. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. And 
then the only thing you have to do is hit play and it's gonna record. So you've noticed the, the timeline has stretched to 239. Um, so you have to stop it yourself. It's not gonna stop by itself at the end of the timeline. Then I'm turning this off, reset to start. Not really needed because now there's keyframe on my character, but uh, it's a good practice to keep doing it. And then turn this, turning this offline. So here's my animation. Now it's recorded and I can do stuff with it. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you've learned something. If you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and share with a friend. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. À la prochaine!